So Ian Reed works at a company called TSO. And though a private company, you do publishing services for the government yeah. in the UK, so, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you're obviously, as front end team leader, you're involved in the digital side of that. Yeah. And you do a lot of Drupal. Yeah, we do. We do a lot of Drupal in the team and the company. Yeah, yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia podcast, Drupal technology, community, and business. Welcome to the Acquia podcast, Drupal technology, community, and business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. We've just been three full days, yep. essentially, in Brighton, in the UK. Uh, Drupal Camp Brighton has just wrapped up. How was it for you? That was really good. It was um, much better than sort of reading any blog posts, is going to see someone talk about it and show, this is what we did, this is how we did it. And they'll sort of be more candid. We tried this approach, it didn't work. And that kind of approach you don't get from reading web pages. And you could talk through bits of technology you use and people will tell you what bits you should have improved or you know not they won't tell you what you should improve but you realize that and you pick up all the sort of certain keywords everyone's the new new bits that people are using which you don't find out otherwise so right so this and there's an actual sort of real-time exchange absolutely. going on yeah. yeah it's absolutely priceless it's um it's like consultancy basically <laughs> you know it's sort of it's an open source consultancy thing it's just really great to sort of learn from others experience yeah so if you got new learnings that you're taking back to work next week absolutely we've got some configuration changes we're going to do first thing tomorrow um ready for a release wow so yeah it was as great. a result of the drupal camp absolutely yeah neat how did you come across drupal um i came across drupal um over the years as Sort of done been a PHP developer. Uh, you look at alternatives to um, well, you look at alternatives to WordPress and building it from scratch. And sort of Drupal always came out as the the popular one. Um, never had the need to build a massive site beforehand in PHP. I've worked in lots of other technologies, but uh, moving back to the PHP work recently with TSA when I sort of moved into this role, it was obvious that Drupal was the main one of the main contenders for you know. If you're going to build a large website and need a large CMS, that was the, the technology to use. So that's sort of how I got into it from there. Uh, obviously, the company produced quite a few sites by that point in Drupal. So, yeah, that's sort of my introduction to it. Really. So has Drupal changed for you since since then to, compared to what you're doing now? Um, obviously, lots of change from six to seven. But I wasn't, obviously, I didn't really get into six at the time, so I'm not too familiar with those. It was more having some formal training on it, I think was the main thing, just realise, and also people who'd worked on it, sort of showing this is what it can do, and you, and you see the sites that have been delivered in it in the last sort of few years, the big, big sites, and that really makes you aware of what can be done, and you just realise you have to learn it properly, and hmm. sit back. You're not going to get a site working really quickly, that's kind of, you can't sit and do a tutorial and expect to have something really useful straight away. You have to go and the new technology, I think that's the... How much has the community played a role in, in making you a better oh. Drupalist? Enormously. The um, blog posts, is always reading different blog posts and people contributing ideas. Um, the, the forum on Drupal.org, obviously look at Drupal.org pretty much every hour. <laughs> you know, that kind of, you're always on there for something and that's sort of the you know it's the best source of information. It's always from the community, and there's all people who've done it and they've been, had the same struggles. Because, you know, you, the way you can search, you'll always search for this particular error message, you'll find something on Drupal.org, and you'll get some way towards an answer for it. So that's, a, yeah, brilliant. What's your favourite thing about Drupal? Um, I think it's the, the scale of what you can do with it. Mm. It's enormous, you know, it's not just... Like WordPress is, you know, it's predominantly a blogging platform. You think oh, it's really good for blogs, but you can do anything. with Drupal, you can do pretty much any website, and that's the, what I like. And the, there's modules for so much stuff that saves you so much time, so you're not reinventing the wheel every time. So it's just, yeah, that whole. Approach. Right, and it, it so it, it 
it solves all sorts of problems for you and lets you do the interesting new things, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and you get to, yeah. And it lets you work at a scale that you couldn't with, uh, if you're just on your own. Absolutely, yeah, because you can't, yeah, to build some of the, like we saw one today all about um, uh, the, what's it called? One of the forum pieces, but building a new set of forums. And it had, um, just all had stuff that you could respond to and you could tag someone with it. You type an at and you could tag the different users. All that sort of stuff, just to have that, not just have a forum, but to have it at that level, out of the box, was just a really nice touch. Because this piece of work we're doing at the minute, we need a forum on, and it was just, you sort of see it and you think, brilliant. Aha, uh-huh, so that's, that's changed too next week at work, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> From the camp. <laughs> yeah. But you sort of, you see all that stuff and you think, that's, that's, you know, that solves what we're trying to do with that. We can just use that. And that's the, yeah, that's definitely the, Beyond publishing, your company uh, is, in a lot of ways, a, a, a proper digital agency. And you did recently the Drupal website for the Croydon City Council. Yeah. How how was that to work with uh, with local government? It was um, good, a good, really, really positive experience. They um, really liked the idea of Drupal and the open source ethic. Um, yeah, really good, really positive experience. Um, worked very closely with them. They were able to. They got the whole way we were looking at different modules, and they got into that whole thing. And even at some points, they were looking at them, suggesting it. But it was that they were that into the whole idea of it, and they loved that. There's all this work that everyone else has done. They can use together. Um, it goes a lot with the how the Australian government have recommended Drupal in the past six months and said, you know, if everyone uses it, we can work towards what we want together. But that's the um, the Gov CMS project. Yeah. Yeah, they sort of seem, you know, that sort of approach seems to be a good, a really good way of working. I had the chance to attend and speak at several government events in 2014 and several of them in the UK. And I was very impressed with, even at local council, small council level, how people are aware of open source, open data, agile working methodologies. (coughs) And they're really, really keen, and they, they're bringing all sorts of really innovative ideas to the table themselves. Yeah. And it sounds to me like for the technologists in this space, we've got an incredible set of partners to work with yeah, to do absolutely. interesting things. Yeah, the, um, it, was, it was. The whole um, the level of detail of the client was really quite impressive. One bit I remember in particular, we were looking at um, having responsive images, and we were sort of talking through different approaches. and. We hadn't done it as a team before. We sort of thought we were saying various bits, and there's one bit I thought we could do it that way and suggest it. And then the client was like, "No, but you'd still be sending the large image." And we were like, "Yeah, we would. You're right. You know, that kind of to have that level of detail knowledge was um, impressive. And, you know, it was good to know. So it was work. a real partnership. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely a collaborative partnership. Um, but again, we found there was a there's a Drupal responsive image module, so we were able to achieve it that way. So we could achieve it. The two big topics that I took away from my year of talking with people in government were, especially in the UK, local government especially, but government in general is facing continuous budget cuts. 20% this year, 20% next year in a lot of places. And yet they're being told they have to serve the citizen better and more efficiently. Um, And... even though we say uh, end to end digital and all these good sounding buzzwords, um, they have to compete with really compelling app experiences, for example, on the yeah. phone. Talk about how Drupal is, is perhaps their best ally in this, in this fight to really to do more with less. Okay, I think um, Drupal works really nicely for the, the GDS as digital by default. That's the big thing we get pushed about a lot. Um, Drupal works brilliantly with it because it, as we're saying, it allows you to achieve big stuff quite easily. Um, going back to the talk we had yesterday from Jake, uh, Jake from the GDS said about they had identified those key areas, and it would be like say pay your council tax, and say maybe pay another sort of tax. That would just sounds like that would have been a perfect use of a Drupal module to pay something, and you could reuse it, and you've got that whole framework that works really well. The sort of slick app experience type um, experience is with um, a lot of some of the work we've been looking at today were 
um, how the nice responsive themes so people can work at it, you know, they can use it on their phone and they've got a nice, really slick user interface to the back end they can do on their phone. Um, one thing we were looking at with Croydon was, which we looked at options for was there, how they could do it remotely on mobile. Um, we haven't, other bits have stopped us from releasing that, but we have looked at that option that they can publish remotely on mobile phones. So if there was an important uh, incident in Croydon, they need to update the website to say it with, you know, there's that option there. So we can look at those kinds of things. So it gives that whole approach of, you know, instant access to their work. And when, because if there's a big problem in Croydon, they might not be at work. They might be stuck in traffic. They might have been right. something going on. So the, um, the Metropolitan Transit Authority in New York has a Drupal platform as well. Okay. Um, they have a Drupal open data platform, but they're also yep. their main communication web presence is Drupal. And when there was the big um, hurricane in New York a couple of years ago, though exactly that kind of publishing workflow yep. allowed people on the ground to give updates about system services. Yep. Uh, and without a lot of administrative overhead and, you know, webmaster and somebody being yep. physically in the room to, so that was a big help for them. So is Croydon's Drupal web presence, is that a single site that's fully responsive? Yep. Yeah, we've, we've done the responsive uh, implementation for that. The uh, previous site wasn't responsive, so that's a big move up for them. Um, I can't remember the stats of how many people in the borough access it on mobiles, but it is, you know, getting close to the sort of 50% because obviously lots of residents are looking at. Um, there are some stats that I was using in some talks last year that indicate, depending on where you are, uh, in the UK, certainly in the United States, uh, that 60-65% uh, of access to government services now that are offered digitally is already yep. through through phones and, and, and tablets, and I think that's only growing. Yeah, absolutely, that's a, yeah. Big. And I think the other interesting survey result was the number of people who would be willing to do that if it were, if it were possible. What are the sort of needs that Croydon had to sort of front line, I go to the website, what do I want out of the okay. city of Croydon? Yeah, we did um, a full UX study. Um, there was lots of the main tasks on there, like people want to pay their council tax, they want to find out about applying for a planning permit, all those kind of things. We were able to identify those and put those as key interactions on the homepage. Um, and then you go drill down each level, um, like say you went to health and benefits, then you'd have like a set of interactions there for um, book a blood test or I don't know, I don't think that was one, but that sort of thing is all related to that context which we've managed through the taxonomy. So that sort of, it allows us to work out exactly what people want to do and give them the best information, the best, easiest way of getting it um, by separating all the different uh, content types and representing them nicely on a page. We're able to really give them the information they want and just really focus them to get what they're after. So. so when I hit that web page, I'm going to see the, the, the things that I most likely want to do on the site yeah, first. Exactly, yeah. Because you get, you know, it's um, unfortunately a council website, you generally only go there if you want to achieve something. So that's what we sort of identified and tried to focus it on. I want to know when the library's open. Exactly. I yeah. want to uh, figure out where I have to take my rubbish. I yeah. Yeah, those pay taxes and parking fines, I yeah. guess. There was um, one site we liked really fantastic design was the um, City of Westminster Council. I'm, I'm very familiar with yeah, it. Yeah, it's a uh, um, very nice uh, Drupal build as well, as you know. Um, the UX on that we thought was quite bold. I think, they, you know, they, that was, we were sort of looking at that for ideas as well, but we've, you know, obviously worked out our own UX, but the UX on that was a very good example of I'd want to achieve stuff. And that's pretty much all it was focused on was. Right. So, so when I cut this together, okay. I'll drop in a screenshot of that in the post and perhaps in the video version of this. Yep. But for everyone listening at home, um, without the picture here, essentially on when you hit it on a mobile device, you have a, a dark blue background and six large yellow button-like yep. areas that ha are very, very task-oriented. Um, and then to get to anything else, you have to you have to sort of get past that. But it's um, they're very happy with that model. Yeah. So, and, and I think it's worth pursuing. And they've also got some great statistics about um, user engagement and satisfaction with that platform. Cool. They've done some neat tricks, actually. Um, the planning application process is one of those top yep. uh, actions. And they've been using it long enough. They have, um, I forget now if, so when you send the application, 
um, they used to have a lot of call center volume, people asking, okay. when am I going to hear? When's it going to be approved? I need to know about this. Yeah. And in that workflow, they added a single step more, which is when I submit the application, I get an email back okay. that says, hey, thank you for applying. Our average working time is 14 days, 30 days, whatever it is. Yeah. We will be in touch with you. And they've got statistics that clearly shows once they turned on that email okay. response to the application that call center volume went down 30%. Wow. That's right? And that's actual money savings. Yeah, exactly. And it's the sort of thing when we have an open source system, hey, we need this new workflow, go and do it. Yeah. You know, a 10 minute change can yeah. save us literally tens and tens of thousands of pounds in that instance. Yeah. And let whoever was in the call center answering the phone get on with perhaps Processing more applications. Yeah, right? exactly. And there's less keys on the phone calls. If you're yeah, I love these stories. I yeah. love these stories. It's so and, and it's so exciting to me that that we can help the the, the governance and and the well being of our fellow citizens as technologists. This is the other area that interests me uh, an incredible amount. And, and I talked about that a little bit uh, in my keynote on the business day. Um, how this very abstract set of code on the screen lets us change the real world, yeah, exactly. right? And, and, and since we're all very much idealists in the open source world, I mean, a lot of people come from a really idealistic place. You know, the chance to make the world a better place yeah. just feels uh, just about as good as, you know, when my paycheck comes at the end of the month. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's right there. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you have to yeah, be pragmatic think, as well. Absolutely, you're absolutely right. It's... Um, that's what becomes obvious with all the, all the work we do. A lot of it you think wouldn't have been able to do that without open source. It's people giving back that makes the world, it does make the world a better place. Absolutely. Hey, so thank you for doing your okay. part. And really, thank you for, take, for taking the time oh, no to, to chat with me. That's good. That's really good. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Cool.